Hi, in this video we'll walk through how you can create and call recipe functions in Workado. Recipe functions are a way to make reusable recipes that can be called upon by recipes across your workspace. This makes recipes easier to design and maintain. So let's take a look at how it works. So in our team's workspace here, we have a couple recipes, and each of them has their own approach to handling errors. In this first recipe here, in response to an error, the builder has simply added an action to send a message in Slack. Taking a look at another example recipe, we have a recipe that upon running into an error, the recipe will create an incident in our support system, in this case, ServiceNow. And finally, in this third recipe, another builder has added in a slightly more sophisticated error handling approach, creating an incident, sending a message in Slack, and adding a step to log the errors. With so many critical recipes running, what we want to do is standardize our error handling across all recipes. And instead of reinventing the wheel and creating the exact same steps for each recipe, we'll create and call a recipe function to add into each. So creating a recipe function is no different from creating any recipe that you've built before. You go through the same steps. So I'll give it a name, error handling function. And now the only difference is at the start point here, I'll choose build recipe function here on the right. Now I can go ahead and click start building. Now recipe functions operate like any other recipe. The only difference is that the trigger event or starting point is when the function is called. And so how we configure the trigger for the recipe function, all we need to consider is for the input, if someone wants to utilize the recipe here, what data does the recipe actually need to run? So in this case, for our error handling framework, we want to capture the error message. And to do that, I'll click enter manually and type in the name error message. For the data type, I'll select string and we'll mark it as not optional to ensure it's a required field. Next, we'll add a field for the error code. And here I'll follow the same steps, give it a name, and however, this time, I'll select the data type as integer. Other fields that are good to include also are the recipe ID and the job ID, which we'll add really quickly here. Now, in terms of the actions, these are the set of steps that we want the recipe to perform. And I could manually add the steps. However, since one of the recipes we looked at before had a set of fairly robust error handling, we'll just leverage those steps. Jumping back into that recipe, I can just highlight the set of steps, right click, and copy, and I can really quickly paste it into our recipe function. And that will save us a ton of time and a ton of clicks. But of course, given that this trigger has a different schema from the recipe we copied from, we'll have to remap the values. So for creating the incident in ServiceNow, to create the incident, for the description, let's make it the error message. And if we take a look at the data tree to the left, we can notice that what we've defined as the input parameters have now become data pills available to us to map to the different fields in this recipe function. So for the short description, we'll just type in workado recipe error and map in the recipe ID. For the Slack message, I'll just post the error message as the notification. And for the log, I'll map the data pills for error message and error code in Mercado logs. And that's basically it. So now we've successfully built our recipe function, but how do we call the recipe function from an existing recipe? So to do that, let's save the recipe and jump back to one of the recipes we'd started off looking at. To call a recipe function, we just add an action from an app at the point when we want it to run and search for function in the app search and select the first app that pops up, the recipe function connector. And then from here, I'll select synchronous callout. And then to select the recipe function I just created, I'll find and select error handling function. And finally, for the mapping, we see that the function has data fields created from when we created the parameters earlier. So I'll map the data pills to those corresponding fields and that's it. Now, whenever this recipe runs, the recipe function we just created, error handling function, will run as well. It will create an incident, 
post a Slack notification, and create a log message. And just how we called it in this recipe, we can call it in any other recipe within our workspace. So that was a brief introduction into how to build and call recipe functions. To find more information about recipe functions, you can visit our docs at docs.workado.com.